Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I am going to discuss about a very interesting topic, some object uh, which is the brightest object in the whole universe. And uh, if we go uh, regarding its invention, so uh, it uh, we have to go back uh, 70 years in the past. So like uh, in the era of 1950s. So it was the same era when our uh, astronomers and scientists were uh, used to use uh, radio telescopes to uh, explore anything in, within the universe. And uh, uh, while uh, exploring, they had found uh, a very strange things. So uh, at that point of time, they had found uh, quasi-stellar objects. So uh, the what was strange about uh, these objects was is like uh, they were billions year far away from us. But uh, despite of the fact that they are uh, extremely far from us, they are still extremely bright. So uh, on the basis of the first observation of our scientists, uh, they had termed this object as a quasars. So uh, let's uh, wrap this introductory video and let's start with our topic, quasars. Quasars. They are among the brightest and most distant objects known to man. These astronomical objects of high luminosity are found on the center of galaxies. They shine so brightly that the brightest quasar in the universe can outshine all of the stars, including our sun. Now before starting over the video, let's understand what is a quasar. A quasar is a powered gas spiraling at velocities approaching the speed of light into extremely large black hole. These black holes are billions times larger than our sun. Quasar is among the brightest celestial objects that are crucial to understand how the earlier universe look like. Now why I am using the term earlier universe is because Quasars are so luminous that they are visible even at a distance of billion light years. So what quasar we are seeing right now was in that state billion light years ago. Now why we call it quasars? That's some short form of quasi-stellar radio sources. This name is a byproduct of the first observation what our astronomer did over quasars because all they look like uh, these points kind of sources of electromagnetic radiation mainly in the radio part of the spectrum <laughs> but uh, later on this turned out to be a wrong observation because uh, they are neither stars nor uh, quasi stellar actually their main energy, energy was isn't even uh, released from the band of electromagnetic spectrum they are far more energetic than that what they really were, were the active nucleuses of the galaxies. Let's understand uh, quasars a bit more uh, with some uh, diagram. And let's uh, make a bit more understanding over black hole. Before proceeding further, uh, I wanted to ask like if you haven't uh, subscribed my channel yet, so please do hit the subscribe button. So uh, coming back to the quasar. So suppose if we have a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxies and uh, suppose its actual mass uh, is uh, at the center uh, of this one. Now this is the outside curve and suppose here is the particle uh, coming uh, passing nearby this black hole and it start going to get attracted here and uh, coming uh, coming here to form an accretion disk. So there, there are lots of particles and uh, if those particles don't have the enough escape velocity so they are going to pass uh, they are going to fall in, into this uh, this point now uh, like before proceeding further so if uh, uh, if you are not aware of what is accretion disk so accretion disk are uh, so revolving gases plasma or any particle around the space object they are turned as a uh, accretion disk so now uh, as the things are getting faster and faster 
they these particles are coming uh, closer and closer and uh, bumping into each other they are actually generating a more gravitational potential and uh, the nearby falling particles are actually converting into the uh, actual energy and actual temperature and emitting these electromagnetic radiation mainly in the x-ray part of the spectrum perpendicular to this accretion disk so in this way uh, uh, to let the electromagnetic radiation uh, uh, go in a free space now uh, there is uh, some sort of contradiction here like uh, uh, while in our earlier lookups uh, in uh, uh, over the black holes we used to understand like uh, nothing actually can escape a uh, black hole like uh, nothing can actually escape the event of horizon uh, before proceeding further if you are not aware like what is event of horizon so uh, it's a black hole uh, Uh, it's a black hole event of origin which is essentially the point from which nothing can return actually so it's a, you can assume it's a prism ball so where you can get in but uh, uh, you can't uh, get out from there so uh, in this way so actually uh, the these radiations are uh, not emitting from this center so these are em- emitting from the uh, nearby uh, colliding particles here and they are uh, going perpendicular to this accretion disk so in this way we are uh, we are seeing the, how the quasars are forming here as we already discussed about uh, quasars there are a few as uh, other set of uh, active galactic nuclei as well uh, one is quasars we discussed right now the other one is a blazar and the uh, last one is the rickel radio galaxy so coming to the like uh, like uh, uh, what are they so they are a similar active galactic nuclei only emitting the electromagnetic spectrum across their whole spectrum but uh, the main uh, difference among them is uh, uh, regarding their perspective their projection so uh, if you talk about uh, radio galaxy so they are uh, uh, projected perpendicularly uh, actually you can see right here in the image uh, whereas uh, if you talk about uh, equesa so they are uh, pointed at a certain angle uh, like this and uh, if we talk about the blazars so they are projected uh, towards us uh, like this so uh, uh, these perspective are uh, ma- making a difference among them many early observations over quasars including the first uh, two quasar 3c48 and 3c273 which uh, which were discovered firstly were made in the early 1960s by british australian astronomer john bolton they actually used a 200 inch that is around 5 meter hell telescope bolton and his team were able to observe a quasar 3c273 as it passed behind the moon these observations also let them obtain their spectra and again that spectra looked very strange showing unrecognizable emission lines these lines tells uh, astronomer which chemical elements are present in the object they are examining but uh, for the quasar the spectral lines were uh, nonsensical seeming to be indicate elements uh, which they are not aware of most of the discovered quasars are billion light years away from us this makes them the most distant objects to be discovered by humans quasars played a great role in shaping of the universe they decreased the active star formation by heating up the gases as hot gas cannot collapse and uh, form a new stars it is uh, one of the possibility when the andromeda and uh, milky way galaxy will collide the supermassive black hole will merge and create a new quasar the study of quasars and active galactic nuclei in general has come far but uh, there is much we still don't understand whatever portion of info i had covered in this video is uh, uh, what i am aware of but uh, you can found a lot more information over the internet about the quasars So friends if you like this video do subscribe my channel 
and if you have any ideas or if you want to point out some sort of uh, improvement you are seeking in my channel so you can comment below thanks thanks for your time